But there's already been speculation that Frank Vogel might get the boot. If he gets the boot, it's the most stupid firing in at least a decade, bro. It makes mm-hmm. no sense. You have genuinely, if you're a Suns fan and you're really trying to figure out, man, what the heck happened to our team? We were so good. We've got all these players. You have nobody to blame but your owner, bro. If you are the owner of a sports franchise, I don't care if it's football, basketball, baseball, pickleball, soccer, I don't (laughs) care what it is, bro. Be the owner. You hire people to run the team because that's their job. You don't need to be doing multiple jobs. Just take your bread. You just drop like four or five billion to buy the team, rake in the cash that comes in and sell it when you're 80 and make a trillion dollars and go ahead and give it to your kids. I don't need you to be calling the Nets owner and trading for Joe Sy and then going to offseason. You trade for Bradley Bill. You trade away all your good players. And now all of a sudden, y'all are sitting here like, well, we just got swept what in the happened? first round by yeah. the Timber Wolves. And then you got the nerve to go into a press conference and talking about, well. Oh, it's extremely fixable. I mean, let, let's let's just be real, although this isn't a cool narrative and the national media really won't want to play it out there. But, like, ask the other 29 GMs. 26 of them would trade their whole team for our whole team and our whole and our draft picks and everything as is. Like, the house is not on fire. We're in- yeah, you're a f-ing liar, bro. <laughs> you're a liar, bro. You are literally being so delusional right now, and it's so sad for that fan base because if you go back to just 2021, that team was literally – the finals was in their hands. The Bucks had to come back in that series to win that game, to win or to win that series, I mean. And y'all are now in a position where you have lost – lost – y'all got swept in the first round of the playoffs by team who best player is 22. Y'all supposed to be this big three, this overwhelming force. Bradley Beal laughing on the sidelines on game three. Like, it's sweet. It's no urgency out of y'all, bro. It's no urgency out of y'all. I don't understand that. He at the podium talking about something. I've never been swept a day in my life, so I'm – I can't – I'll be damned if that happens. You know. First of all, you crazy. You play in Washington. You, you play <laughs> like what? You right. never been in the playoffs to be talking about. I ever been swept. <laughs> then you got swept. You talking about some? Well, like I'll Jordan. be damn. I wonder why. Because you sitting on the bench laughing in game three like some funny, bro. Y'all getting the breaks. If they ever see you, talking on y'all, bro. In y'all's, he's in y'all's building doing this. He in Phoenix. <laughs> bro i cannot i cannot stress this enough you it's no i don't a hundred percent put a hundred percent of the blame on matt ishbia bro you cannot put anything else any i don't care what frank vogel had to do well he literally said he wanted a point guard we talked like mad times on this podcast about the fact that devin booker is one of at at the time the best shooting guard in the NBA. He might have got that snatch from him this series. And right. the Edwards said, give me that. We're talking about this dude, one of the best shooting guards in the NBA. Y'all traded with Chris Paul and was like, who needs a point guard? We'll just have Devin Booker do it. Frank Vogel said, I kind of would prefer if we had a point guard. Mm-hmm. The front office said no to the head coach that y'all brought in for this this season. You telling me y'all hired him in the offseason and then in that same offseason traded away Chris Paul. And then he was like, you know, I get it. We brought in Bradley Beal, but can we, like, can we get a point guard? Just one. And y'all just said no. And then now y'all get swept in the first round, and y'all are going to be like, man, Frank Vogel, you suck, bro. You should get out of here. <laughs> y'all gave him no defenders to work with, knowing that he's a defensive-minded head coach. What was he going to do? He going to play bowl bowl? Bowl bowl game played off the floor in the first round. He has no business being on the floor in that series. What is Bobo going to do? He has right. nobody to work with, bro. <laughs> Grayson Allen. Grayson Allen might have been a genuinely a best defender. He rolled his ankles. It didn't matter, bro. There's nobody else guarding anybody on his team. Anthony Edwards getting wherever he want. Cat getting wherever he want. Rudy Gobert is bullying y'all down low. Y'all are a soft basketball team and a bad run organization now that y'all owner want to come in and become the freaking GM on top of it, bro. If you're the owner, be an owner. Let the GM be the GM. Now you're in a position where y'all don't even own y'all owns draft pick until 2031. And you're talking about you're going to trade it this offseason to get better. Uh, If I was a Suns fan, 
yo, I would start a petition or something. He's He's got to go. I couldn't do it. I would be losing my mind right now. Yeah. <laughs> I can't with him, bro. Like, it's, and it felt like it was so obvious the whole season. Like, I promise y'all, I'm really not trying to be the guy to, like, take a parade right now to be like, oh, man, the Suns, we, I told you so. But it's like, bro, y'all could watch the games. The defense is bad. The offense isn't good. KD and D-Book just got hot sometimes, but they're not doing anything to really spring them open. There's no actions. There's no motion. There's no chemistry between everybody on the floor. It's literally ISO, ISO, ISO. And what happened in the playoffs? Jaden McDaniels is putting Devin Booker in a fucking straight jacket, bro. He can't get nothing off. Kevin Durant is getting bodied. Nurkic is getting bullied. Nurkic was getting bullied when they went big, and then they went small, and Nurkic can't play. You can't play when they're big. You can't play when they're small. When can you play? And this is what you traded in for. Like, I, it doesn't compute in my brain, bro. It doesn't compute at all. But this is this is what they thought they needed to do. They had to get a big three. They just had to have the big three, bro. So y'all made y'all bed. Y'all got a line. I I literally couldn't have said it any better myself, like quite literally. And well, I mean, we said it before, like, bro, I, I guarantee if you go back to look at the first pod we've ever did, not ever did, the first pod after they made the Bradley Beal trade, we literally said, why? Like, it's just, that's a little, that's overkill. Like, you didn't need another score. Like, that's not what was needed. You didn't, especially going from the series last year where you're like, Kevin Durant, oh, he's killing him. Devin Booker is, like, the greatest in the world right now. Why would you look at that and be like, yeah, you know what we need? Bradley Beal, some more scoring. Let's get rid of our point guard. In in general, the problem is, like you said, the roster construction. I'm not going to go too deep into it because you literally hit on everything. Firing Frank Vogel, like you said, would be the dumbest thing in the world. I put, what, I literally, what I literally put zero blame. Like, I, I literally, done, I, I quite, I, like, I couldn't put l- like less of the blame on Frank Vogel. Like, there's absolutely nothing he could have done. The fact that I think the icing on the cake was the fact that he said, I want a point guard, and Yas said no. No. <laughs> and it's crazy because all of these reports came, it felt like, bro, as soon as the game four ended and they were officially swept, like 20, 30 minutes later, here come a Shams tweet, here come a mm. Woj tweet. And it's like, Players are in the after. Remember when they got bust by the Clippers and it was like 30 to one, 30 to like nine yeah, after the first uh, quarter? They said at halftime, Frank Vogel started yelling at them and they said one player had to hold back his laughter. Y'all childish, bro. This is not a serious organization because nah. you know what that means? That means that Shams or Wolge or somebody has known that for weeks, months mm-hmm. since that's happened, bro. He's just been sitting on it, waiting to report it. That is corny. Y'all are corny. Y'all are not serious. Y'all are not really trying to actually win a championship, if that's the type of mentality you have. Because y'all should be embarrassed because Frank Vogel is trying to be an actual coach and get on y'all, actually try to get y'all to perform because y'all are getting blown out by 30 in the first quarter to a Clippers team that I don't even think they had Kawhi that game. And even they did, who cares? Y'all should not be getting – no NBA team should be down by 30 in the first quarter. Point blank period. does not matter who it is. If you put an NBA team against a college team, I don't know if they'd be down by 30 in the first quarter. Like, come on, bro. That's that's purely an effort thing. As a want to. You can't want to begin bust like that. But if y'all don't care like that, then y'all don't care like that, bro. Yeah, it's a smash it Matt HBO, bro. Like the the owner that just like I bought the team. I'm gonna be completely hands-on. I think I know more basketball than everyone. That's the biggest problem, bro. You are an owner. And the, the people that's been in the, you know, they work their whole lives to just right. get into the front office position. Just because you, you have, you just, you're you a real money. estate guy. Yeah. You have money and you watch some NBA and you probably play some 2K or something, bro. Now, that's he, the only explanation. He played for, for Tom Izzo at Michigan State, he was a D1 college basketball player. Not that good enough to go to the NBA, but, you know, he played D1. That doesn't, that means nothing to me. There's NBA players who I don't think no ball, bro. Like, that literally plays oh, yeah. NBA that I don't think no ball. So mm-hmm. that, that means nothing to me. So, yeah, it's it, to me, like I said, literally 100% is on the ownership. They're Matt, all it should be a career NCAA D1 stats at Michigan State. He averaged 1.1 points per game, 0.2 rebounds, 0.2 assists, 
50% from the field. He played in 13 games, averaged 3.1 minutes per game. And you're going to sit here and tell me, you're going to sit here and tell me that you know more about basketball than I'm pretty sure the Suns GM is James Jones, who was with LeBron for all those years, all those finals runs that he made. He put together the team in Phoenix that made the fucking finals. And mm -hmm. you're going to hop in and just, nah, bro, I got this. I'm going to talk to Joe myself. I'm going to call Joe. I'll, say, I'll do it me. myself. Like, bro, what are you That's talking about? That's what really about, gets bro? me. You went out of your way to call him yourself and get the deal done. You literally have a GM. I feel like I'm getting PTSD from being a Cowboys fan all these years and having Jerry Jones be the that's owner. That's what it in feels it. Like. like. No, that's legit. You can't do what both. It feels you like. genuinely can't do both, bro. It's so rare that you have people that can pull off multiple roles. One of the only people that's really done that with any type of success is actually Mark Cuban in Dallas, and they have a ring to show for it. Um, but it's like, it's just such an anomaly. If you look across every league, very rarely do you have owners who get involved in the sport itself. When you look at somebody like David Tepper in Carolina with the Panthers, you see how bad that organization is right now. A lot of that has to do with the fact that he just can't stop and just be an owner. He's got to be hands on with who they're taking. And that's why they ended up with Bryce Young. And now they're, he's coming out with these weird comments about, you know, that's what they wanted to do. And he just can't let the people who actually scout. And that's their job. They're literally paid like every two weeks to be a scout, to be a GM. He just won't let them do their job. He has to be the guy. Jerry Jones just can't be the owner. He's got to be the head of the football operations. Y'all don't need to be doing both, bro. Literally, if I know your name as an owner, it's either a great thing, meaning like a bunch of success, popular, or a terrible thing. Fact. I don't want to know your name. Like you're supposed to be behind the scenes cutting checks, bro. Literally. It's not like a like obviously if you're like you know like one of these real famous owners or you got a lot of chips blah blah, blah that's one thing. If I know your name and y'all haven't had success, that's a problem. Like it, that's it, he gets one hundred percent of the blame, bro. Literally, that's that's all it is. And really, and it's <laughs> the funniest part about everything is the fact that they're like, we're just gonna run it back next year. Yeah, you got no choice, buddy. Yeah, like what you yeah. think you're gonna do? You have the yeah. largest payroll in the nba by almost 15 million that year you're like so far over the second luxury tax apron like i just said they don't even own their own first their own first round pick or their own pick in general i think they have their own 2028 20, second and their own 2033rd that's it everything else is a pick swap which means they're going to get the worst pick from another team that they traded with they traded four picks specifically from phoenix just to get kevin durant and they have nothing to – there's no avenue forward for this team. It's crazy to say as, like, limited as the Lakers' assets are, the Suns are, like, ten times worse. They have nothing to give up, bro. Dudes is really – imagine being laughing, like, that 2031 pick is about to do something. That's a child right now. Whoever <laughs> got dropped that is literally – I don't know if he's a teenager yet. Like, that's not funny, bro. You literally mortgage your whole team's future after you bought them and you're just like, yeah, bro, 26 other teams, you know, 26 other GMs, they would rather be us. I don't, yeah. bro, if I was any of the 29 other GMs, I would not in a million years want to be in the position that the Phoenix Suns are in. 